ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبد الله ورسوله يقول الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واضرب لهم مثلا رجلين جعلنا لاحدهما جنتين من اعناب وحففناهما بنخل وجعلنا بينهما زرعا All praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Yes we praise him we seek his aid and we seek his guidance we seek refuge in Allah from the evil within ourselves and from the evil within our sins. Those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided, none can misguide. And those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has led astray, none can guide. And I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and messenger. My dear respected brothers and sisters, there's a very powerful conversation recorded in the Quran. And this conversation is not recorded in the Quran for the sake of drama or for the sake of just entertainment, but rather there are lessons within this conversation that were so powerful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to record it in the Quran. And He recorded it in a surah that we are, subhanAllah, if we are following the sunnah from the sunnah of the Prophet we are supposed to read this surah every Friday. It's surah al-Kahf. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before getting into this conversation, He highlights the assets of one individual. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on by saying, وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلًا رَجُلَيْنَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Prophet ﷺ, give them the example or tell them about the two men. And He goes on by saying after this, جَعَلْنَا لِأَحَدِهِمَا جَنَّتَيْنِ مِنْ أَعْنَابِ We gave one of these two individuals a garden. Not only did we give him a garden, but if anybody knows anything about farming, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on by saying, min a'nab, it was a vineyard. Vineyards are one of the hardest crops to grow. They require to be babied a lot. They require, if, if, they're, if they're going to grow, they have to be wrapped around the stick for the sake of growing properly. They require a lot of manual labor. And automatically when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is highlighting such a, a huge asset, if he has such a big property, you automatically know by default he must have a lot of employees. Meaning Allah has given him a lot. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't stop there. But didn't stop there. He goes on by saying, These plants are so delicate. That this man, subhanAllah, he thought it was his idea. He decided to plant palm trees all around his garden for the sake of protecting these plants. So if any wind were to come from any direction, they would have to hit the palm trees first before they hit their crops. وَجَعَلْنَا بَيْنَهُمَا زَرْعَىٰ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on by saying, I provided him with, ad with additional land even after these, these gardens which I blessed him with. And he goes a step further by saying, This garden which I blessed him with, if anybody knows anything about agriculture, if anybody knows anything about farming, you don't get paid every two weeks. You don't get paid every month. You have to harvest the whole year. And based upon how that harvest goes, then and only then do you get paid. So some people, I only made 80% of my crops. I only made 50% of my harvest. 30% of my harvest. It all depends on how it goes. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on by saying, Kilta jannatayni atatukulaha. These two gardens which I blessed him with, Lam tadlim minhu shay'a. They made a hundred percent profit each and every single year. There was never a default in anything. He hundred percent profit every single time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes a step further by saying, And in order to grow crops, you need water. You need some sort of water source. And back then in order for these people, they have our agriculture system like we have now, where we have sprinklers and all this futuristic subhanAllah stuff that we got going on now where the water can reach anywhere. They had to manually walk to a well, fill up these buckets, walk back just to water their gardens. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on by saying, I bless this man not only with a perfect garden, not only with a garden that comes back 100% profit, but I also go, he goes on by saying, nahara, And I provided for him a, 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 a well that just started sprouting water in between the two gardens. So they were just getting watered perfectly. He didn't even have to do nothing. He literally had to do nothing. Except just move a little bit, harvest, go sell. And Allah had written for him, it was going to be 100% profit. Now one day he goes on by saying, this is where it gets interesting now. After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights all this asset, all his assets, and if you anybody understands Arabic, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on by saying, The wording here is using that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking credit for it. The man didn't do it, I did it. Now this is where it gets interesting. This same individual whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had blessed with, with all of this that was just highlighted, He's walking one day, he's having a conversation, and he comes across his neighbor. And he's just having, yeah, He's just talking to him. He's, it's just normal conversation. Hey, how you doing? Nothing, nothing too spectacular. And in the middle of this conversation, he just, for whatever reason, he gets a little bit prideful. He gets a little bit arrogant and he goes on by saying, You know, I got more, I got more land than you. I got more, I got more property than you. I got, uh, I just got more than you. For no reason. Right? And subhanAllah, it's not like, and if, if you pay attention to this ayah, it's not like he ran out of his house, ran to his neighbor's house, knocked on the door, neighbor answered, said, You know, I got more than you know. This was simply hiwar fil kalam. He was just having a conversation with his neighbor. And I see this happen a lot nowadays within the Muslim community. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this act in the Quran. When you, when, 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 when you take the blessings which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with, and you use them for the sake of, oh yeah, I got this and I got that. We have to be very, 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 very careful. And I see this come up a lot even when it comes to the issues of weddings. You know, my son, he got married at the, at the plaza. He got married here. It was $150 a plate. Where, where did your son get married? If Allah has blessed you with something, there is no need to make mention of it. I don't care how subtle it is. I don't care. And I see this a lot happen within the brother, within the within the Hifs community. The parents will be talking. You know, my son he finished twenty one just How much your son memorized? My son just got it. My son got it accepted into Harvard. Where, 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 where are your kids going? Why are we playing this game? Subhanallah. And the reason this is so critical because. All of this leads back to community building. If we're constantly flexing and showing off the blessings which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us, all it does is build animosity between us. This brother's always talking like this. Why do I don't like to deal with this brother? He's arrogant. And the issue is when you call out the brothers talking in this manner, their response is, oh, I'm, I'm not bragging. You know, I'm just telling you what happened. I'm not bragging. We have to be very, 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 very careful. And this is so powerful. Ibn Qayyim, he says something very powerful. He says, a blessing, excuse me, a calamity, which leads you to back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is better than a blessing that will make you forget about it. Now this man, after making this statement of saying, I got more than you and so on and so forth, the Quran doesn't even mention the response of his neighbor. This same individual now, he goes on, but say, he, goes back to his, he goes back to his home now. وَدَخَلَ جَنَّتَهُ He enters into his garden. وَهُوَ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِهِ And Allah says he's, he's only oppressed himself. And subhanAllah, when you start to get delusional in this dunya, as far as the blessings which Allah has given to you, you start to forget about the akhirah. So he goes on to say, وَدَخَلَ جَنَّتَهُ وَهُوَ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِهِ قَالَ مَا أَظُنُّ أَن تَبِيدَ هَذِهِ أَبَدًا You know, life is so good. I got such a good setup here. There's no way all of this can go away. Like, like uh, Allah must love me if he's blessed me this much. There's no way. Right? And he goes a step further by saying, You know, I don't think the hour is coming. Or even if it is coming, it shouldn't. I don't even think it's that bad. You know, if, if Allah has blessed me so much here, what's, what's to say that he's not going to bless me in, in the akhirah as well too? When we, and subhanAllah was scary, the scary thought about this, this is the way the Christians think. They think if, if God has blessed you, that means God is happy with you. 
If God is taken from you, that means God is mad at you. In Islam, we are taught if you have, it is a test. And if you don't have, it is also a test. It don't matter. Verily, the most honorable amongst you is the one who fears Allah, not the one who has property and money over the one who doesn't have. And subhanAllah, you often find that the people who you genuinely try to talk about that, I've come across these individuals. I try to tell you, Akhi, fear Allah. You know, everything is so good. Why? Why do I need to pray I'm a good person? Why do I need to do this? I'm not harming anybody. Right? This, when, we get, when we get delusional within our blessings, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with, and we don't see them for what they are, and that is tests, we begin to forget about Allah just like this individual did. But it doesn't stop there. He goes on by saying, now his neighbor hears what he just said. You know, even if I go back to Allah, I'm going to find better than this. Now his neighbor, who he just abased, who he just insulted, who he just a bit belittled through the means of conversation, here's what he just said. And this just shows his level of taqwa. He runs over to him. Look at his level of wisdom. Once again, they're just talking. It's not like he ran over to him and said, hey, fear Allah, how could you make such a statement? He's just talking to him. He used wisdom. And he asked him a very simple question. You're going to deny the one that's created you from nothing, from dirt, from, from, a, from, a, uh, from an extract of clay, from, from, from a vile extract. Like you're going to deny Allah? You, th you think you did all this with your God? You think Allah blessed you? You think you did all that you worried about your God when you've had, you, you're denying Allah? What's wrong with you, man? And he goes on by saying, Verily, he is my Allah. I would never associate knowing when I don't know with Allah. And he goes on by saying, He goes, rather, look at how his neighbor is advising him. Rather had when you entered your Jannah, Allah, Glory be to Allah. If Allah has blessed you with it, say, Masha Allah. If it be your children that have memorized the Quran, be your business which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed you with, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you, say, Masha Allah. And subhanAllah, we often think that we say, Masha Allah, when we see something beautiful or the purpose, the scholars have said that the reason why we say, Masha Allah, glory be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has made such a decision to bless me with such a blessing. It's not just, oh, mashallah, no, glory, tabarakal, glory be to Allah that has decided, that has saw something in me to bless me with such a blessing. His neighbor told him, rather, if you would have just said, mashallah, glory be to Allah that has given me such a thing, instead of saying, oh, I'm, there's no akhirah, or I don't think it's going to come, or even if it does come, Allah's going to take care of me, instead of disbelieving, this would have been better for you. And he went a step for it. You don't think I got less than you? You don't think that I see that you got a bigger garden? You don't, th you don't think that everybody sees that you got better than them? There's no reason to talk about it. There's no reason to flex it. If Allah has given it to you, be humble and acknowledge that it's a test. Just like the ones that don't have. But he doesn't stop there. And it's something so powerful because he goes on by saying, He goes, be careful talking about your blessings. He's advising his neighbor. He goes, maybe, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he'll give me a better, gen, a better garden that you have. Maybe not only that, he goes, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send something down from the sky to destroy it. Maybe your water source will run out. Just be thankful it's been 100% profitable. Just be 100% thankful. It's 100% profitable. We'll finish this conversation in the second khutbah. أقول قول هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم في الصلاة. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله رب الشحي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل عقدة من لساني يقه قولي. 
after his neighbor advised him to be humble, to be thankful, to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing him with what he has. The following morning, the man that was boasting, the man which Allah, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed with, وَأُحِيطَ بِثَمَرِهِ فَأَصْبَحَ يُقَلِّبُ كَفَّيْهِ عَلَى مَا أَنْفَقَ فِيهَا He woke up clapping his hands like this. Everybody, subhanAllah, some people when they get nervous, some people itch their hair, some people just keep fidgeting. This individual, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains his nervousness by clapping his hands. And when he woke up, he looked at his garden, he began to clap his hands back and forth. And he went on by saying, He went on by saying, I wish I had not associated myself with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I wish I had never became arrogant with the blessings which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had blessed me with. I wish I would have just been more humble. I wish I would have understood it was a test and I took it for what it was. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on by saying, uh, 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 There was nobody after that can help him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent, sent the wind, allowed the palm trees that their purpose was to protect this vineyard, end up being the means of falling on it and destroying all of it, and the man lost everything. He went from 100% profit, and just overnight, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took it all away simply because he was not able to acknowledge his blessings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا If you were to try to count the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you could not be able to. Who are we to think, my dear respected brothers and sisters, and I, and I speak for myself first and foremost, never ever think you did it on your own. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the provider, you made effort, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed you along the way. There's no reason to become arrogant which Allah, with that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you. You know, subhanahu is a very powerful situation that Ibn Qayyim mentions in his book, Bahr al-Dumu'ah. It's a hadith Qudsi which came down which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on by saying, if I have given a person, that I'm pleased with this person. And if I'm, if I'm pleased with this person, I put barakah in whatever it is that I've given to him. And there's, 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 my, my barakah is endless. Allah's barakah until that is, is, is endless. There's no limit on it. Now subhanAllah, some sahaba came to the Prophet ﷺ after hearing this hadith. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, we're not trying to call out anybody. And this is the reality. That we're not trying to call out anybody, but there are some individuals with, that, that we know within our personal life, and we're not going to say their names, but and I, this isn't for our community, but these are the sahabas talking now. So there are some individuals that we know that they don't pray, they don't honor the, the commandments of Allah, they don't acknowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why is it that Allah keeps giving to them? Why is it that Allah keeps giving to them? And it's a very valid question. Right? They're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, but they still keep getting. Right? The Prophet ﷺ went on by saying, he says, these people, I want everybody to pay attention to this, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed with everything, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them everything that they desire, and they still fail to acknowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a daily basis, these people, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't take it from them right away, he went on by quoting the ayah in the Quran, وَهُمْ يَأْكُلُونَ كَمَا يَأْكُلُ الْأَنْعَامِ وَالنَّارُ مَثْوًا لَهُمْ These people eat like the cattle eat from the grass. There's plenty of grass. Keep eating, enjoy yourself, keep forgetting about Allah. But what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about their akhirah? وَالنَّارُ مَثْوًا لَهُمْ Their final abode is Jahannam. Simply because they do not acknowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to the blessings which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us, has blessed them with. Let us be amongst those, my dear respected brothers and sisters, who acknowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for every single blessing, whether it be the morsel of food or whether it be the new car which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with, acknowledge him on every single level of the blessing. Ibadullah, inna Allahu malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi, ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. 
اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وبارك اللهم على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم اجعلنا من التوابين اللهم اجعلنا من المتطهرين اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنا رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا وخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسما كما حملت على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فصلنا على القوم الكافرين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين Before we get into the Salah, just uh, a, uh, I was informed right before Salah that Brother Suhail Ahmed's father, uh, uh, Nisar Ahmed, is, is hospitalized and they are requesting your du'as, inshallah. Humble reminder to keep them in your du'as, inshallah. Welcome to Salah.